kind of advice do you have for them just in, in life and beauty? Be careful with your friendships because as you get older, they don't last that long. Hey ladies, welcome back to my Fierce Aging series. Today I have a special guest all the way in from Arizona, Helen, she's 81 years old and it's really exciting. She has some really fun things to share with us today, a lot of advice, and we give her a beautiful look for her eighth wedding anniversary, which is today. Are you ready? Let's get this beauty started. So you are 81. I am. And you just turned 81. I did. You want to be 82. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> what do you find now that you've reached into your 80s? What is special about the decades 80s? The pace is slower. Mm -hmm. I'm working on important things like relationships. I've always had a good relationship with my children, mm -hmm. but I still like to make sure I have a good relationship with them. Mm -hmm. How many children do you have? Three. Three. All girls, boys? Two boys, one girl. Okay. And you live in Arizona? I do. So are you active in Arizona? More so before. Well, when I moved to Arizona, no, not so much. Uh, married, living in a, a retirement community. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's quiet. So life is a little slower and I like it a lot. So tell me when you now have rolled into your 80s, which is a fabulous decade. Thank you. Do you do your beauty different? Do you do your skincare different? Do you do your makeup different? Yes. And how I so? Do. Well, I started using a primer for my eyes mm -hmm. and um, I'm still working on my eyebrows. I want to know how to do them because they've gotten very thin. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a little bolder with the color. I always did browns and now I'm branching out to purples. Oh yeah, for your mm -hmm. eyes? Yes. Your eyeshadows, oh, that's mm -hmm. enough. See, 80s and very bold. I know. <laughs> so do you feel that it just gets better and better regardless of makeup and hair and skincare in your 80s? Do yes. you feel that did you have a different opinion, maybe in your 50s and 60s, of what 80s would look like? Normally, you wouldn't think about, oh, no. I wonder what I'm going to be like in my 80s. Mm -mm. You don't give it a thought. No. So do you have any goals for your decade of 80s? I want to make sure I have a good relationship with my husband, mm -hmm. with my children, with my friends. So I guess relationships, I'm working on that. What advice would you have? Because it's a special group. I don't have that many ladies in their 80s on the show. So mm -hmm. what kind of advice do you have for them just in, in life and in beauty? Be careful with your friendships because as you get older, they don't last that long. Mm -hmm. So be careful with that. And I'm married now in my 80s, so I want to take care of my husband. So now you recently got married. You've been married eight years today, yes. which is your anniversary, which is yes. exciting. Thank you. And you knew him, though, as a teenager. Yes. And then it came full circle. Yes. And then you remarried. Yes. I was single for 20 years. Wow. And then what made you decide to get married? He came along. Yeah. I really didn't think about what I wanted, that I wanted to be in love. I was in love the first time. I thought I should be in love the second time. And I was. He's a great guy. What do you really want to work on today with, with your makeup? What would be fun? Because it is your anniversary. This is it a special is. day. And you're staying in Miami. So mm -hmm. we want you to look fabulous for tonight. Thank It'll you. last until tonight anyway. So oh, that's, good. Yeah, that'll be great. So what do you want? How do you want to feel? And how do you want to look? I want to look beautiful. You'd have to be a magician. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I don't know what, quite what to do with my eyebrows because my hair is silver, mm -hmm. but my eyebrows are still kind of um, strawberry blonde, which is what I was before. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether to add gray in or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that I pulled, um, let me see, I pulled, we pulled a taupe for you. So nice, yes. just soft taupe. I don't think we need to go into grays because your hair doesn't have a lot of deeper grays. If it did, then we would add that in, but we don't want them to be too dark. We just okay. want them to be natural and frame. So we'll work on the eyebrows. 
we can't have an anniversary no. and not do eyelashes. <laughs> have you ever worn eyelashes before? No. Okay. So we're going to do a fabulous look. <laughs> and let me just show you. I'll give you a little cheat sheet. Do you see what it says in here inside the compact? Let's get this beauty started, which you always say. Let's get this beauty started. So you yes. ready to get this beauty started? I'm ready to get this beauty started. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm going to start Helen's makeup tutorial off with our brow stencils. Now, I created these stencils for you in the shapes that I wanted. We have four, slim to classic to full to bold. Just depends on what you're wanting to create. So I'm going to take the slim arch for Helen and this is just a guide. So you might not have eyebrows, you might have very thin eyebrows and you're very overwhelmed with how do I know where they go and I want them to look natural. This is a template for you. So I'm going to use my skinny brow pencil in taupe. We're gonna first mark out where Helen's eyebrows should be. So we're gonna see here that according to her bone structure, we want to go from the corner of the nose straight up. So she is starting where she should. This is where her hair is. Then when we go ball of the nose over the iris, you can see she is arching. This is where she's arching her eyebrow. And then I go corner of the eye right here. We'll make a little mark. I usually stop. We can always go longer if we want to, but I usually stop a little bit and then I can bring it down. Same thing on this side. So we go straight up. She's starting where she should with the hair. You can see here. Then we start to see how the hair gets thinner and then we don't have any hair in this area. So I think this is where it becomes confusing because it literally goes straight up and then it's like, well, where do I go from here? Do I keep going out? Do I come down? I want it to look natural. So we're going to go straight up. All right, we have our hair there. Ball of the nose over. Right here is where we want to arch. So I made my mark. Then the corner of the eye straight up here. So. Now I know when I take my template, I place the front of the template where her brow is starting, and then I naturally will just bring it across like this. Now her hair does go up like this, that would not work. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and make it where it is on the actual brow bone. So when you're doing this at home, you can just sketch out. Don't worry, you don't have to have it perfect. Just know where it's gonna end. Do a little at the top here little bit at the base and then you kind of have like a little skeleton so then you know okay I'm on to something I have it there I'm going to take my brow pencil and now just do these wispy strokes filling in the brow so I don't want to have a heavy hand I want to first lightly stencil in see where I am now you see that the hair is coming down here and there's just jumps here I like to make a base like that where you're it's almost like you're connecting like a little bridge right you don't want it to jump too high you want it to be a little bit lower on that brow bone and then we're going to come just down and out a little bit so again here you're going to see the hair you see that we have nothing really anchoring the brow. So that is really my intent to create that structure, that base to the brow, especially as we age, you're going to see the brow start thinning. It might get really frustrating because you have that hair and then you don't have the hair and then it seems like it's doing its own thing. So what we want to do is just get back into control, go to the base of this where it's kind of just stopping and create that brow. So you can see that I went a little bit darker here because we have to, there's no hair there. And then if this is lighter, just go back and make the strokes to complement the other brow. So it's really about just checking in. It might take you quite a bit when you first start, but then you'll, you'll get it. And I love the taupe color. It's not too dark, not too light. We do need color. We do need structure. So she does have more silver hair but we want to have that dimension to our eyebrows so it frames everything. To finish off the brows, I'm going in with my brow mascara in blonde and all of those little hairs that are white or gray, we're going to include and incorporate so that they have a little bit more dimension.
I'm going to start off the eyes with the eye primer. This is my favorite part because it's going to neutralize out your eyes using my angled concealer brush. I'm going to tap into the product and keep your eyes closed. I'm going to go to the base. So this is going to cover nicely any of those reds, blues, the veins that we see, especially in this inner corner here that tends to give that shadowing, that darkness. So I'm going to go up to the brow bone and come out. Now that we have the eye primer on, we're going to move on to our eyeshadow palette. This is a three wall palette. I made these little brushes for you because if you're on the go, you wanna be able to apply your eyeshadow. So this is Fresh Beauty. Now, Helen has Sweet Carol. So that's two mattes and a sheen, but this one is all sheen. So I'm taking her to the next level. I think it'll look really beautiful today, just giving her a nice pop of color. And I don't shy away from sheens on mature eyes. I just don't. I like to see light. I like to have something different. I don't like to see matte all the time. And I'm going to take my flat shadow brush and I'm actually working out of my essential makeup brush kit. So these are all the brushes you need. You don't need 50 brushes, they right? Great. And then I just created the Lux brush soap. So you have something that you can wash your brushes with and know that they're going to last a very long time because you are doing the chore that no, none of us want to do. <laughs> you know we don't want to wash our brushes. <laughs> we like tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. But now you can do it very easy and simple. So taking our flat eyeshadow brush, going into the middle color, I'm going to apply this to the lid and I'm going to bring it down into the inner corner, making sure I'm getting to the base of the lash. And then I'm going to bring it out. So it's going to be really just very soft. Again, talc free. These are made in Italy. I wanted them to be very soft and buildable. So if you want a wash of color, you can do that. If you want to have a more intense look, you can just keep adding. I'm going to take the other side of my flat shadow brush and I'm going to go into the lightest color for just the brow bone. I'm going to take my tapered blending brush. It's almost like a little pencil. I'm going to go into the darkest color here. I'm going to give a dimension to Helen's eyes. Going right to the end of this corner here, I'm going to give her that nice depth and then I'm going to blend. So don't worry that when you put it on that you might feel like it looks messy or sloppy. And, you know, we're just working with the lid skin here and we think it's beautiful. We don't need to do anything. We don't need to feel like, oh gosh, it's so wrinkly or it moves all around. We work with that. I know I might be the only one. We might be in the minority of thinking that wrinkles are beautiful and just how we're aging is so just natural and pretty. And I, I love that. I think it's refreshing. I'm gonna be taking my blending brush and I'm going to just blend in to the other eyeshadows that I did, just like this, like a little windshield wiper, swirl it here. It's a very soft brush. It has these really nice soft bristles. So it's going to blend the eyeshadow almost like for you. I'm going to take my waterproof eyeliner in Plum. Now, what I'm doing is I'm creating a beautiful look for Helen. I'm not trying to make Helen look like she's 20. I want <laughs> Helen to look like Helen at 81, almost at 82, see, mm -hmm. you tricked me. <laughs> and I want her just to have this really radiant beauty. That's what it's all about. That's what my intentions are today. So I'm going to go to the base of her lash, look down, and I'm going to start building up this eyeliner, not too heavy, just really nice to outline her eyes. You can see that I'm making these little strokes, right? I'm not trying to go from the, the inner corner all the way and stretching it to the end. That doesn't look natural. I'm just building this up, nice little strokes like this that you can do. And I find that as we age and we have maybe shaky hands, we can't see that well, mm -hmm. that it's easier when you do the little dots like this. Don't worry that it might not be perfect or, oh my gosh, I don't see it. That's okay. We can go back over, add a little bit more. And then if you're like, oh no, I just made, a, I just went mm -hmm. on top of the line. Now it looks terrible. This is why I have this brush called short smudge brush. 
right? This is like my little eraser brush. See, it's very dense, this brush here at the top, and you can just drag it across and it just smooths everything out. So you don't have to panic, like, oh no, I just made a big mess. Mm -hmm. You just go to the eyeliner and then you just stream across, very nice and soft. And then you feel like, okay, I just corrected any bumps or any, anything that looked a little too much. Now I'm gonna be doing lashes on you. So I don't have to worry too much about the eyeliner right now. I'm gonna build up on that, but we just want that base right now. I'm going to just balance it out, look up, with my eyeliner underneath, again, like these little short strokes. And then we just nicely smooth it out underneath. My next product is going to be my Volume Up Mascara. This is a fabulous mascara for any decade, especially 80s and beyond, because we have these little lashes, right? Mm -hmm. That we get, we can't see and we're a little frustrated. Mm -hmm. And that's why I made this wand that has teeth. It's like a comb. So it's gonna grip all of those lashes. So you don't have to work that hard. Look down. We're going to just go to the base, grab the lashes, and then pull up. So it always looks like my guests don't have any lashes until I take my wand and then they come alive. Like, Helen, you have actually very long <laughs> lashes. So you can see that we have Helen's lashes done here and we don't have any lashes here. And I always, until I take this wand, I can never see the lashes and then we really bring them out. So this is volumizing. This is taking all of those baby lashes that always get lost if you have one of those big brushes and it's not the right formula that just roll over your lashes mm -hmm. and you don't capture every single one. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take my Ardell 420s. These are called natural lashes. They've been my favorite for years and years. And I'm going to see, I always cut them down to fit, I customize them to fit the shape of my guests, their eye. Because sometimes I find that they're too long and then it just looks too much. I might, these are actually, short lashes, but I might cut them down just a little bit depending on what I see. But then I will meet you back when we have the lashes on. Now we have the lashes on that look dynamite. So you have really nice fringe. We are building upon this, ladies. This is not this once the skin comes together, we color correct. I mean, this is fabulous. We'll go back to the eyes and maybe we'll enhance them a little bit more, but we've got everything going on with the eyes. We're gonna start working on the skin. But before I do, I'm gonna do a little rose lip balm for hydration to prep our lips before we get to the lipstick and the lip liner. I'm going to start with our color corrector, Just Peachy, and I'm going to use this underneath Helen's eyes. This is just going to correct any of that purple that I'm seeing right now. I'm gonna go up into this little area that is a problem area for a lot of us, and then look up going right underneath here so we can take out any of that purple, pinks, redness. Before I work in her Just Peachy, I'm going to take my no redness. Any redness that I see on her face, I'm going to just give a little swipe to this, just a little bit of redness, maybe just on the nose a little bit, and then we'll work that in. Just want to set up our skin the best that we can before we apply the serum foundation. I thought that would be a nice choice today since this is an event. We're gonna have a really beautiful, smooth, just really fresh and hydrating look. I'm gonna take our foundation buffing brush. I'm just gonna work this in. I'm going to get back to the Just Peachy, but I'm gonna just work this in. It's nice to let the Just Peachy set up for a little bit also, so you just don't go right into it. it gives a little bit more coverage. I'm going to take the angled concealer brush. I'm gonna work in the Just Peachy that I put underneath the eyes. I have two different creamy concealers. I have fair and I have light, and I'm going to use them in a special way just to not keep the under eye too light. I wanna have a little bit of warmth there. So this is what I do. So I have this dome applicator that most of the product is at the tip, which is really nice because it gives it more of a precise application. So 
I'm just going to find areas that I find are a little bit dark right here. And then I'm going to, in between these, don't need that much. We just put the Just Peachy on. I'm going to take the light and go in between. So we're going to get a really nice mix of that light and that fair together. We're just going to go back with our angled concealer brush and we're going to buff this into the skin. And what's really nice is that it's nice and creamy. It's not too heavy, but not too light. That's what I really like about this product is that you're getting that coverage, but you're not getting heavy coverage. So for me, when I was formulating, this was very important because I didn't like what I was seeing with so much heavy coverage and then you couldn't really sheer it out. So is it buildable? Yes, you can build this, con this creamy concealer, but the idea is, is just to minimize that darkness. You don't wanna have tons of makeup on the face. You wanna feel more free, especially as we're aging, mature women want to be a little bit defiant, not feel like they're covering everything up. We are going in with our serum foundation recently launched this isn't fair and you shake the serum foundation before you put it on it's ultra silky and smooth it's very light you're going to see when i drop it on my palette here how really beautifully it's just very light it's like the lightest serum now if you're using it on your face with just your fingers i would say maybe four drops but when you're using a brush it soaks it up so i do a little bit more i just take my foundation buffing brush I'll put it into the serum foundation and then we will get a really beautiful, do you feel how silky it is on the skin? Very. Which is really nice. It's just going to tone down any of the pigments, really be nice, especially since you're in Arizona, you don't want something really heavy on the skin. I'm going to take my brightening powder and I'm going to take my blending brush. This is an eyeshadow blending brush. It's a clean one. So this is another way to be able to use this brush. I will put it into our brightening powder, the Nikita Banana, because this is just going to pick up just enough. Now, I sometimes will use my powder brush, but it's very dense. So it might be too much, too, too overwhelming for the under eye, depending on your skin type and what you're trying to achieve. So what I do is I just rotate the brush in the Nikita Banana, and then I will go under the eye and it just puts just the right amount of powder just to set the concealer and that just peachy. Now we have the serum foundation on. Helen has a nice toned skin, no pigmentation. We've really just evened everything out, but you can notice that she really needs some color to the mm -hmm. skin. So I picked out my Ballerina Rose. This is a beautiful powder compact. There's three different colors you can choose from. So you can mix them, like I like to just mix and match like this, or you might wanna just do the brightest pink, or maybe it's a day where you're like, you know, I'm gonna to tone it down. It's up to you. I take my angled blush brush, just like this, and I can go across if I want to, or I can just pop it with a bit of pink, just really depends, but I don't want too much. I'm going to see where we are with our color, not too much on the skin, smile. Just so you know, if you feel that it came off too powerful, you still have a little serum foundation on the foundation buffing brush. So you can go back and just mute it a little bit like this. Another option for you, if you wanted a cream blush, is doing the St. Bart's. This is a really pretty, I'm gonna just do a little bit on top of your cheek right here. This is a really nice soft pink too. If you wanted just a cream blush, maybe you're not into powders, you could do a little of this beautiful soft color. We are going to use our rose all day, which is my favorite. <laughs> my favorite saying, Rosé All Day Waterproof Lip Liner. This is going to be really beautiful. With the colors that we picked out, I'm going to 
just line Helen's lips like I normally would. I'm not overlining. I just want to get a really nice definition to her lips. I'm going to be taking my concealer slash lip brush. So one side has concealer. You can use this also as a lip brush if you wanted a bigger brush on the end there. And then this is retractable. So you just pull it out like that. So we're going to go into, actually I can. This is a really beautiful color for Helen. It's just gonna really give her that fresh lip. I'm going to top her Actually I Can lipstick with Shumps. It's a really beautiful lip gloss. It's almost like, you know, they add a little champagne at the end mm -hmm. just for that like extra, they top it off. That's what we do with the Shump lip gloss. Just a little topper on the lips, just gives it that extra freshness. Now we have Helen's look coming together. What I wanna do is I wanna go back to the eyes and intensify them a little bit more because this is her anniversary party. This isn't just a day look, we're doing this for an event. Mm -hmm. So we want to have a, something a little bit more. So I wanna intensify the eyes a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'll just add a little bit more lid color. I'm taking the short smudge brush because it's going to be denser. It's going to pick up more product going into the darkest color here and just adding a little bit more dimension to the eye. So my last step will be my and now it's turning into my signature rose mist because it just makes you feel so good at the end. So I'm going to use a little Chantecaille. This is pure rose water. Mm. Does that smell beautiful? Mm. It smells so good. Doesn't it? It makes you feel good, right? Yeah. So I'm going to show you your look. And then you're going to tell me if your husband's going to recognize you. Because I know he wanted <laughs> to recognize you. Do you feel glamorous? I do feel glamorous and light. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. And I smell good. You do. <laughs> what is the most exciting thing that you've experienced in your 81 years of living? The birth of my three children. Mm -hmm. That was really good. Meeting my husband, mm -hmm. my second husband. That was really good. And meeting you. Oh, that's so sweet. How exciting is this? Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. What would be your number one advice to women in their 80s? Focus on relationships. They last. Other, other things are just things. They're just things. But people last. So ladies, this has been so exciting for me. I'm thrilled that we are entering into the 80s decade because this is just very exciting for me because YouTube and society really doesn't honor this. They don't celebrate women no. in their 80s and about just feeling good. And again, at the end of the day, is it about makeup? No, it's about how you feel. It's mm -hmm. about how you project. I mean, you feel probably really excited looking beautiful, being on your anniversary, going out, being in a different city, mm -hmm. right? And that gives you life, Yes. right? You're getting outside of your comfort zones. Probably wasn't overly comfortable for you to come in without makeup on. Not too much. <laughs> and share it with all of my beautiful <clears throat> ladies in the audience. And thank you. So I'm just excited. I'm just excited. Every decade is really fun. I'm learning so much about all of the women from all over the country that are coming in and being on set with me and letting me play. I really love playing with makeup, making you feel incredible, making you feel beautiful. And I really thank you for being here today, traveling all the way in. <laughs> and sharing your beauty with my audience. So ladies, until my next video, I'll see you later.